Chief Meteorologist Wayne Hart along with Stacey May here in the First Warning Doppler Weather Center. A tornado warning has been issued for southern Vandenberg County, including most of the city of Evansville. I'm showing you the wind velocity here, and we're seeing some rotation. And again, this is radar indicated. We don't have confirmation of an actual tornado. But just in the past five or ten minutes, as this line of storms was pushing into Evansville, a little bit of rotation began to develop there. And that would be just north of uh, Route 62 on the far west west side of Evansville, and that will be tracking up here to the northeast. So right now, the highest threat would be on the west and north sides of the city of Evansville. I'll show you reflectivity here. And it's, it's, it's this entire cluster of storms, which frankly was kind of weakening as it was approaching the Evansville area. We weren't seeing much in the way of lightning uh, coming out of this, uh, but there's a lot of wind shear out there. And apparently it's tapping into some of that. And we're beginning to see uh, some uh, rotation that is significant enough for the National Weather Service to go ahead with a tornado warning. So this does cover the entire city of Evansville. It does cut off there just about at Angel Mounds and... The storm is going to be uh, moving to the northeast. And we got a pretty pronounced notch uh, right over uh, the downtown area. So this actually could be a little farther south than what I was indicating there on the wind velocity uh, table. So bottom line, if you live in Evansville, you need to be getting into your tornado safe area. Of course, that's a basement if you have one. If not, lowest floor of your home and put as many walls between you and the wind as possible. Get underneath something sturdy, like a heavy piece of furniture, mattress, blanket, put a helmet on, shoes on your feet, and we'll ride this storm out, which should be taking about five to ten minutes to move through the city here. But so you can see the polygon cuts off there at Darmstadt to the north, Angel Mounds down to the south. It does get into Warwick County. Newburgh, you're kind of the northwest side of Newburgh. Uh, Castle High School, you're right on the edge of this warning, as is the Boonville area. Chandler, you are a part of this. So let's get back to uh, the velocity, see if we can pinpoint something here a little more specific. And meanwhile, uh, Stacy's been in contact with the National Weather Service. Are they indicating anything, Stacy? They are a little bit, basically what you're saying. They began to see some weak rotation, and they continue to see just a weak rotation, but they were beginning to see it try to wrap up a little bit. So considering the environment that we're in, and that's their words, and obviously what we had uh, developed this morning and what it could still be kind of tapping into uh, in the atmosphere that we have out there today, they decided to go ahead uh, and issue uh, this tornado warning. So it's it's going to go for about another 25 minutes until 3 o'clock. Again, it's radar indicated, and they're seeing some weak rotation, but enough to prompt uh, that tornado warning uh, that's going to go until uh, 3 o'clock. And a few places uh, have also been reporting to the National Weather Service of spotting maybe a, a little funnel uh, a funnel cloud uh, here and there uh, in the Evansville area. So again, enough between what they see on radar and some of the uh, spotter reports that they went ahead uh, and did issue uh, that tornado warning. So we're going to keep... A close eye on this. Otherwise, as this line moves through, uh, you can see behind me uh, on our first warning uh, Doppler radar system, like Wayne said, we really haven't been detecting a lot of cloud to ground lightning or that has been kind of diminishing some. No other warnings on the board where you see those orange boxes. Uh, that is an indication of uh, special weather statements. We always tell you that's kind of a step down from a severe thunderstorm warning and certainly a couple step down uh, from a tornado warning. But anywhere in kind of a, along the leading edge of this line, there could be some gusty 50 mile per our winds and some hail. So that's what we're seeing for the most part in this line. But again, that weak rotation up there on the northwest side of Evansville uh, is what prompted the National Weather Service to go ahead and put out uh, this tornado warning, Wayne. And we'll be watching it for about another 20 minutes here. All right. And I've got our camera from downtown Evansville now looking off to the uh, west side here uh, from Fifth Third Bank. We're seeing obviously a lot of heavy rain downtown, not seeing anything that would indicate a funnel or, or a possible tornado. But Stacey, you may want to check some of the other cameras we have, kind of swing them in that direction here. But you can see that this is pretty much uh, the heavy rain event that is coming through uh, the Evansville area. And we're kind of keying in on that particular notch right there. We'll check uh, live radar. And, and, and that might be a favored area for rotation. You can kind of see it tucked in there. And that would be right along Morgan Avenue pushing into the northeast side. So this is moving pretty quickly uh, through the city. You're not going to have to stay in shelter all that long. But uh, that would be, I think, the most favored area for a possible tornado. So there is the Lloyd Expressway. There's Morgan Avenue. There's Diamond. And so that, that notch is now crossing over Morgan 
heading towards uh, the uh, 69 and Morgan Avenue interchange up there on the northeast side of the city. And then it would kind of ride uh, 66 there, or 62, I should say, up uh, towards the Chandler area, which is under the tornado warning. So again, if you're in the city of Evansville, you want to remain in your tornado safe area. This is radar indicated, so uh, we don't have confirmation at this point. As Stacy mentioned, it's weak rotation, but considering how much wind shear we have out there right now, the uh, National Weather Service went ahead and uh, certainly put a warning on this, and they've just updated the uh, the information, so I'm going to get back to Stacy here in a moment, but you can see maybe a little bit of shear right there, kind of in that notch, kind of pushing now into the east side of Evansville. So I think the most favored area for a possible tornado would be on the east side, just north of the Lloyd Expressway, up towards Morgan Avenue. You can see that little pixel of brighter red there could be an indicator of where we have perhaps a better chance for a, uh, a tornado trying to spin up. Let me zoom in a little bit tighter yet here on uh, the, the city and give you more specifics exactly where we're, we're talking about. So we've got, uh, let's get everything into perspective here. Uh, that is the, the Lloyd Expressway. you got 41 over here. So that little area there pushing over to the northeast side, and you got Morgan Avenue up here. And so that would be the most favored area for a possible tornado right now. Stacey, what are they saying with this update? They have updated the warning and they've actually taken Posey County and Henderson County out of the warning. So like we told you, this is moving pretty quickly. So already the National Weather Service has canceled the tornado warning for those of you in East Central Posey County and the far Northern Central part of uh, Henderson County. But they are going to keep it going uh, for uh, the next about 20 minutes, a little bit less uh, for Central Warwick County and East Central Vandenberg County. Uh, as they issued that, as still radar indicated rotation, but the severe thunderstorm that they believe does have that rotation, at least showing up weekly on a radar, still could be capable of producing a tornado. And they have it located near Melody Hill there on the uh, north side of Evansville and the entire uh, area moving off to the east at 50 miles per hour. So again, they've kind of taken those of you where this has already passed through in Posey County, taken northern Henderson County out of it, but they are continuing it there uh, for Vandenberg County over into Warwick County as this moves east at 50 miles per hour. Nothing confirmed though still a radar indicated tornado warning Wayne all right still watching that notch which I think is is lining up with that circulation pretty nicely in approaching the Lynch Road I-69 interchange there as you can see it right here just to get perspective that is Morgan Avenue there Lloyd Expressway there is 69 you got Lynch Road right here so the Lynch Road interchange with I-69 very close to that notch which we think is the best uh, signal that we have, the best signature here on radar that would indicate potential rotation and a, and a tornado that may try to spin up. And that's going to move up to Stevenson Station here as it crosses 69 into uh, western portions of Warwick County. The new update just came in, and now you can see that leading edge has crossed over the I-69. So let me back uh, the, uh, the radar up here uh, and look into areas of Warwick County. As this storm continues to push across the city of Evansville, which now uh, is kind of on the back edge of this uh, uh, severe, possible severe storm, possible tornado, now pushing up into Warwick County. So here's Chandler. We've got still a little bit of a notch right here. It looks like it already has moved through the Stevenson Station area, so it's moving now up 62 towards Chandler, Boonville area. So you want to be in your tornado safe area there as the storm continues to push to the northeast. And again, our best estimate on, on where a possible tornado would be would be in those little notches that you see, which have now crossed over 69 and into western uh, Warwick County. Let me look at uh, reflectivity here uh, just to see if, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, storm relative velocity, see if we're seeing anything in terms of a couplet. Nothing that's all that pronounced. So even though we're, we've talked about the potential for a strong tornado, uh, this afternoon. What we're seeing here on this line does not look strong at this point, not to say that this could not get stronger the farther east that it moves. That was the thinking going into this event. As these storms developed, as they moved eastward, they would gain more strength. And this is our first uh, significant warning, certainly, of this afternoon event. But in terms of the velocity right now, not seeing anything that really sticks out in terms of a couplet here, but we are seeing that uh, notch in the radar. The reflectivity, it's getting a little bit messy as you push over towards uh, Western Warwick County. So we've got 
Uh, just to bring everything into view, there's Chandler. It looks like this storm is now pushing into the Chandler area. And I'm going to back it up a little bit here just to see what we've got going in Evansville because we should begin to see uh, the threat for Evansville winding down because Evansville is kind of on the back side. So most of Evansville is okay unless you're along the I-69 corridor there. I think we're okay in terms of the threat. It's now playing out in Warwick County along the State Route 62 a corridor pushing into uh, the Chandler area. That's where we have a possible tornado. We're watching it on live uh, Doppler radar here. Radar indicated, uh, but we saw rotation at times here on the radar. And we've, we've expected uh, something like this to develop uh, this afternoon ahead of the cold front. And this is the main line. Once this pushes on through, we will be ending the severe threat. Tornado watch will be cleared behind this line. And this was the main event for Evansville. So hopefully we got it through the city without any damage. We already had a little damage this morning in Evansville and certainly points to the north. But once this main line moves on through, uh, the threat for severe weather will be ending. But we still will have that threat continuing south and east of Evansville until about 5 o'clock uh, this afternoon. But we're focusing in on the leading edge of this cluster of storms now pushing through the Chandler area. So it's not as well, that, that, that notch is not as well defined as it was earlier. So that's a good sign that maybe the rotation that was trying to form here on the leading edge is not quite as uh, significant as it was earlier. But this will be getting pretty close to the edge of the polygon here, so the Weather Service will have to decide whether they extend this a little farther to the northeast. Turpin Hill, you're right on the northern tip of that. Boonville, you're on the southern tip. And so the most favored area will be coming out of Chandler now and kind of passing north of Boonville. Ironically, the same area that got hit pretty hard this morning with those very strong straight line winds that were estimated at times close to 100 miles per hour. So it's a kind of the same area that is under the gun right now with that potential tornado. And now the new sweep has come on in. A storm's now beginning to move into Boonville. Crossing the Indiana 61 corridor from Boonville to Turpin Hill. We got a little notch up towards the Turpin Hill area. But as we check out to velocity, we're just staying focused here on the leading edge of this uh, possible tornadic storm. Uh, obviously, there's storms in other parts of the area, but they are not severe. This is the one that we're most concerned about. So we're going to really zero in here and track it community by town, by city, as it pushes uh, across Warwick County. But the good news is, in terms of velocity, we're not seeing anything that really stands out uh, uh, like a significant uh, tornadic uh, rotation here. But uh, reflectivity showing a little bit of a notch, and that's what we look for uh, when we're just looking at the traditional radar view. This is what you're used to seeing. We don't show you velocity a lot. Unless it's a really big, well-organized tornado, we often don't get a really good velocity signature. So we really have to look at how the, uh, the, the leading edge of these storms look like with the reflectivity. And when we start to see these kind of notches here, uh, that's sometimes an indicator that that could be the part of the storm that is trying to spin something up. And that would be passing very close to Turpin Hill. So we're getting close to the edge of the polygon. Stacey, Weather Service indicating anything at this point? Not so far, but they only report uh, of any kind of, uh, you know, wind dam no wind damage, but they did get a spotter report uh, to the National Weather Service of a 60 mile per hour wind gust on the south, southeast side uh, of Evansville. So the National Weather Service has that. Like Wayne said, they're going to have to decide here in the next few minutes what they're going to do, whether they are going to continue it as a tornado warning, maybe drop it down to a severe thunderstorm warning based on what what they see on radar and the reports uh, that we have had. So we should know that here in the next few minutes. But even a 60 mile per hour wind gust, that is just into a uh, severe criteria and certainly enough to uh, uh, do some wind damage. So we have had that report. So those of you that are uh, in kind of off to the east there uh, through Warwick County, uh, again, kind of just be on your guard here until we get this through. And once we get this through, then again, the severe weather threat will end. And you can see that we're already, if you look at the alerts map here, clearing that a dark red, that's our tornado watch that was supposed to go until uh, 6 p.m., but this line is the end of our severe weather threat. So those of you in southern Illinois, you are already out of that uh, tornado watch. And again, once we get this line to continue to move east, the Weather Service will uh, continue to uh, end more of those 
uh, counties from uh, that watch. But again, all we've had so far, as far as uh, any storm reports, Wayne, is a 60 mile per hour wind gust on the south, southeast side of Evansville. And I'm going to keep an eye on the uh, chat with them uh, to kind of see what they're going to do warning wise here in the next few minutes. Uh, thanks, Stacey. And I want to take you back about 15 minutes and show you why this tornado warning was issued. This is around, two, this is 232, and you can see the polygon that was issued. There is the rotation that got the concern for the National Weather Service. It was somewhat broad, but you can see it there, the blues up against the bright red, just na south of Casson there, uh, just tracking uh, along really between 62 and 66 there on the uh, west side of Evansville. So they saw that. They put the warning out. It looks like that warning has just been, they just canceled it. But yeah. I'll show you how things progressed along the way. So if you can take a look at that area right there, I just showed you. And again, we're focusing in on this area right there where, where you see that red up against the blue. We'll step it through time and you'll begin to see that go up across the north side, kind of crossing Diamond Avenue up towards Melody Hill. But then it kind of weakens. We don't see that's a couplet like we did earlier. There's a little bit trying to develop there along 62 and then you get up towards Lynch Road, but we're just not seeing uh, it staying developed and like, like it was about 20 minutes ago uh, when this uh, warning was issued. So good news there, but we do continue to see a pretty definitive notch uh, right there to the south of Boonville, but the weather service is confident enough at this point to let the tornado warning expire, and I guess we, we don't even have a they, so far, they haven't issued a severe thunderstorm morning. warning. Like I said, we did get that report, though, of a 60-mile-per-hour wind gust. So just kind of still be on your guard. But they're saying that the storm that prompted the warning weakened below severe limits no longer appears to be capable of producing a tornado. So they did cancel that uh, tornado warning about 10 minutes early. It was supposed to go uh, until 3 o'clock. So right now, we do not have any warnings uh, on the board. And uh, we will start to clear that tornado watch. But we still have a little ways to go to get this line completely uh, through the tri State. Yeah, I think we'll know here shortly if that uh, signature on the radar that prompted the warning in Evansville did produce uh, any damage. This is obviously a daytime event, unlike what happened very early this morning. So our newsroom will let us know if, if there was any reports of damage. I'm getting a little signature here, some pretty strong straight line winds here, this brighter shade of red. This is southern Moore County, just crossing over Indiana Route 61, midway between Boonville and then 66 down here towards the uh, Yankee Town area. And that would be moving right towards the community of Pelzer. So you might have an enhanced strong wind threat. There's not a warning here, but, but indicator that this could be at least some 50 to 60 mile per hour winds heading towards the Pelzer area. And that might prompt at least a severe thunderstorm warning if that holds together. Uh, not as strong as what we saw uh, early this morning in northern Warwick County where winds were estimated 90 to 100 miles per hour. This one not nearly that strong, but perhaps strong enough to uh, knock some tree limbs down and, and maybe get close to severe thunderstorm uh, warning criteria. But that's the one thing on the uh, radar here that gets our attention. Back to the reflectivity, still a really nice notch here passing just south of Boonville, but fortunately we're not seeing anything on uh, the wind velocity data indicating a rotation here. But you can see this generally when you get a notch like that, it's, it's air flowing into the storm. And so you sometimes start to get that spin, uh, but as of right now, uh, that does not appear to be the case. We're going to have to watch this, though, as it continues across Warwick County. It's just passing through the Boonville area now. That would head up towards Tennyson next, uh, pretty much along and north of Indiana Route to 62. But as of right now, uh, no warnings are in effect. So we'll go back and kind of set the table, show you the big picture here. And uh, this will be the end of the severe weather threat. Uh, if you're north and west of this line, that is the end and, and uh, of, of the threat. And it looks like Evansville is now in the clear, along with Princeton and points to the west. All of southern Illinois, severe weather threat has ended. But we still have to get this line through western Kentucky and our uh, basically southern and eastern counties. And that may still take about another uh, one to two hours to really get things uh, uh, through the area here uh, late this afternoon. And the air is still very uh, unstable. So we could continue to see uh, potential for some tornadoes spinning up here. The farther east you go, 
the more support there is for a tornado. And so we'll have to watch not only this line here, but what develops out ahead of it. We do have some as a development down here in the Hopkins County area, so it's more linear. What we really don't want to see is a standalone storm that would be more of a supercell that uh, are, are much more likely to produce uh, a possible tornado. And indeed, that, that part of the line I just showed you here uh, in Warwick County now does have a severe thunderstorm warning on it uh, for that pocket of straight line winds that I was looking at earlier. So we'll zoom in on this warning, which is in effect for, it looks like, eastern Warwick County into a northern Spencer County. And what, what are the details on that, Stacey? In Spencer County. This is going to go until 345. So this one's going to go a little while longer if, until we get that uh, through uh, Spencer County. They're talking about 60 mile per hour wind gusts, which we did get a report of when this uh, area was on the south, southeast side of Evansville and penny sized tail. So nothing too big as far as the hail goes, but some damaging 60 mile per winds are possible. A couple spotters also in the Newburgh area reported maybe a few shingles uh, off of uh, a roof or two there. So a little bit of wind damage along with a report of a 60 mile per hour wind gust is so far what has been kind of reported with this. And again, if you look uh, closer here uh, at our live Doppler radar, you'll see uh, that this line does continue to work its way uh, to the east. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. It also looks like we may have another warning up uh, to the northeast. So I'm going to check on that uh, and get you the details on that and send it back to Wayne to kind of show you a little closer on what's moving through uh, Warwick and into Spencer County right now. And this is a severe storm warning tornado possible because it has, uh, well, we're not showing it right here on this velocity one, but we use salt on the other one it has that red line in the middle of it so they're not going with the tornado warning but this is the same part of the storm that prompted the tornado warning for Evansville when we did begin to see some rotation right now they're focusing on this little area right here that little brighter shade of red which is tracking just uh, along and south of state route 62 in the Boonville area and that's going to be shooting up here along 62 crossing into Spencer County and up towards the Christie area that would be the core of potential damaging straight line winds of 60 miles per hour but at the same time we might see uh, some rotation try to spin up a Along this uh, like we did earlier and as we get the look at the reflectivity we continue to see a, a bit of a notch there it's not quite as pronounced as it was in the last scan but uh, that would be the more favored area for rotation and then just south of there uh, you get the, the the greater straight line wind threat and that's going to be crossing 161 there I'll zoom in a little bit tighter and, and uh, show you that. But in the meantime, we do have another warning we up do. in northeastern Dubois County. Yeah, this is, is for northeastern Dubois okay. County. And this comes from the National Weather Service out of Louisville. That's who's responsible uh, for areas there up to the northeast of Evansville. So let's go to uh, my Max uh, computer here. And this severe thunderstorm warning for northeastern Dubois County and also central Orange County, which is just outside of the tri-state, is going to go until 4.30 Eastern time, so 3.30 Central time. And they were seeing a severe thunderstorm located about eight miles northeast of Jasper. So this is, does not include uh, the city of Jasper or points to the south there uh, in Dubois County. But if you're to the northeast of Jasper, up there really in the northeast corner, uh, you can see there that is where this severe thunderstorm warning is. And it's also for 60 mile per hour wind gust and quarter size tail. And they have this moving to the northeast at 55 uh, miles per hour. So it's, it's moving pretty quickly. It's going to move over toward uh, the Paoli area, which again is just outside uh, of our viewing area. Let's go in a little bit tighter. This also you can see has kind of that, it's a yellow box, which is indicate, indi indicating a severe thunderstorm warning, but then when it kind of shades that red inside of it, that's at least giving a little more to the severe storm warning, and they're indicating that there is a tornado uh, possible there. So when I zoom in a little tighter, you can see this isn't a pretty rural area, but up around the Norton area, kind of between uh, Thales and Ellsworth there, and there's a little bit uh, of kind of a, a little notch there too, up in the far northeast corner there of uh, Dubois County, and that's moving to the northeast. So that's going to be moving over into Orange County and really moving right through uh, the French Lick area and then on over into Paoli. So again, a severe thunderstorm warning up there for those of you in the far northeast corner of Dubois County. Technically goes until 3.30, uh, but that will really take it over into uh, Orange County. You guys should be out of the warning there uh, in probably the next uh, 15 minutes. Wayne? All right, we'll get back to Warwick County. We may have another warning that came in, Stacey. Check that out. I've been hearing a lot of 
tones going off. But here we are in Warwick County, and it looks like the leading edge of the strongest winds are pushing into Ash Iron Springs and Point South. Now, Richland City, you're just south of the warning, so it looks like the strongest winds are going to be passing north of Richland City and then along and south of the Indiana Route 62 as we push towards the Spencer County line there. There's Highway 231 and Christie, and it's this little wave right here. This would be the area of favored straight line winds, and if we get any kind of rotation, it would be tucked in that part, and we're still not seeing anything on the velocity that would indicate rotation, but we are seeing that little surge of wind with a slightly brighter red pixels here. Again, nothing that's really intense, but potential 60 mile per hour gust with that little swath of wind that's going to be pushing into Ash Iron Springs and especially points just south of Ash Iron Springs and then continuing across the uh, Spencer County line and staying south of State Route 62 as it gets into western uh, Spencer County and then moving towards uh, the Christie area and the Highway 231 corridor, probably passing kind of between Gentryville to the north and Christie to the south in terms of where the strongest winds are going to be. So that's where we're kind of focusing in in terms of the work. Spencer County warning. Is there another one out there, Stacy? There is for far northern Martin County. That's one of our northeastern fringe counties. Uh, kind of goes with the uh, TV market up in a uh, Haute for your full coverage, but we do want to let you know about it. And you can see up there in far northeastern Martin County, you're also under a severe thunderstorm warning. This is just a regular severe thunderstorm warning. They don't have that red shaded inside of the yellow box there. Uh, so not a tornado possible on this warning, but nonetheless, 60 mile per hour wind gust and quarter sized hail possible there. And you can see it is, it is up there uh, in far northern uh, Martin County, kind of off to the east of Crane, certainly north of Lagodi. Although up in Lagodi, you've got some storms moving through right now. But the uh, warning itself is actually to the north and then kind of to the southeast of you, too, with that one uh, coming out of uh, northeastern Dubois County. So, again, a couple more severe storm warnings up in northern Martin County and then still in uh, northeastern Dubois County. And we've still got just a little bit there of the uh, northeast corner of Dubois County to get that storm through uh, before we can kind of move past uh, that one, too. Wayne? All right. So we're... Back down to the south here with the uh, Warwick Spencer County severe thunderstorm warning here, which is now along the Spencer Warwick County line. And the, the greatest threat is kind of right in the middle here. We continue to get a little bit of a notch, which is right along 62 there, about to pass just south of Tennyson. So that would be the favorite area for some rotation. And again, it's a tornado possible scenario here. We're not seeing anything that really jumps out on our wind velocity product. But to just south of that notch, we are getting a surge of stronger straight line winds. It could be in the 50 to 60 mile per hour range that are going to be tracking along and south of the Indiana 62 there as you push into uh, Spencer County. And uh, that is the uh, the one significant warning we have kind of in the heart of the tri-state. Stacy just told you about what's going on in the northeastern fringe. But you can see that little swath of wind. We should be getting an update here uh, on the velocity uh, any minute. So these products update about every three to four minutes. And fortunately, we got all of our data back. If you were watching uh, late last night, early this morning, at least before 5 a.m., uh, we were losing radar data nationwide, and there was a big network uh, communication issue. That was fortunately solved just before we had our bad storms uh, early this morning, and now everything seems to be working just fine, so we're able to show you all the products we normally do and there is the uh, the wind velocity product that we uh, we look at and we should again get an update on this shortly that's just raw velocity this is what we call storm relative velocity it takes into account the motion of the storm and this one i think does a slightly better job at depicting where that to wind threat is now this is getting about five minutes old so i do expect a new sweep to come in uh, any moment the, the thing with these radars they they cut through so much of the storm at, at many different angles and many different different slices at different levels, so it takes a while to do a full volume scan, and so that's why uh, you get an update, depending on how the radar is set for this particular event, about every three to five minutes, and so we should be getting an update here shortly, but the strongest winds would be pushing towards areas probably just north of Christie and more than likely staying uh, to the south of the Gentryville area. 
and crossing that 231 corridor here in about 10 minutes or so as that storm pushes in. And now there is the new sweep that has come on through. And uh, that swath doesn't look quite as pronounced as it did earlier. We still got the, the little notch up there, but uh, that notch not quite as distinct as it was earlier. And now, you know, we're seeing not quite as much uh, and then, sure enough, we just updated, and we got a little bit of a notch there, uh, east of Tennyson, passing south of the Gentryville area. But and we, we, we show you this, but at the same time, when we look at velocity, nothing is jumping out. Like we saw around 228, uh, that prompted the Weather Service to issue that tornado warning for uh, Vandenberg County in the city of Evansville. No reports of damage that we know as of it right now. Uh, and this is the uh, the main severe thunderstorm warning that we have uh, on the board. Let me uh, go back and kind of show you the big picture here because we'll be getting back to regular programming here shortly. But uh, there is the big picture. And again, the severe weather threat now has ended for Evansville and points north and west. Basically, this line has moved on through your area. Uh, you're done with the severe storm threat, but we still have to get it through all of western Kentucky and our eastern counties here before that threat has ended. And it's still a possibility. There's a lot of wind shear out there that these storms could get stronger. You know, storm Prediction Center has us in an enhanced threat ahead of this line, and even a moderate risk, which is a level four threat in the very eastern fringe of the tri-state for the potential of strong tornadoes of EF2 or, or, or larger. Fortunately, what tried to spin up in Evansville was not nearly that strong, but these circulations, if they get going, could be more significant here in the next hour or two before they clear our eastern county. So anything new from your vantage point, Stacy? Mm -hmm. before we get back to regular programming? No, nothing as far as any uh, damage reports or any more uh, high wind reports. So some good news there. Uh, and those two warnings up in northeastern Martin County and then also northeastern Dubois County are almost the, the part of the part of that line that prompted those warnings pretty much getting out of those counties now. So I would imagine uh, that they will kind of allow uh, those warnings to expire, uh, if not cancel them, a, a little bit early uh, for, again, northeastern Dubois County and also uh, northeastern Martin County. And you can see the storm from northeastern Dubois County is now pretty much pushed over into Orange County and, uh, again, moved out of northeastern uh, Martin County, too. The entire line, though, hasn't moved through uh, all of those areas yet. So, uh, like Wayne said, until this line completely clears your area, uh, we still have that uh, severe weather threat. But then once it does, uh, we're going to get get you out of that tornado watch and uh, we'll finally be done with that but we'll keep an eye on things uh, as it continues to move off to the east here late this afternoon and watching the southern end of the line uh, not seeing anything at all significant here with the tail end of the line down here in western kentucky and even with this batch of storms out ahead of the main line there are some some red cores there indicating some pretty decent updrafts not seeing a lot of, of lightning but keep in mind uh, that circulation that spun up on the west side of evansville came out of nowhere we were sitting back thinking this it's kind of not going to happen, and all of a sudden, it, this tapped into that wind shear, and it began to spin. And that could certainly be the case with any of these cells until we get that cold front through here. And I think by about 5 this afternoon, most of these storms should be east of our area. But a severe thunderstorm warning continues now, primarily for northern Spencer County. Uh, and we'll keep that information scrolling across the bottom of your screen. If we have a new warning that comes in, we will certainly jump back into programming. Eyewitness News first at 4 begins at the 4 o'clock hour on ABC 25. We'll have more information on the damage that occurred early this morning. I'll be tracking what is left of these storms. So keep it here on both ABC 25 and the CW7. And we'll keep you safe and informed throughout the afternoon.